What's going on everybody? I hope everybody is being safe, smart, and socially distant. I want to today draw your attention to the following Kaggle challenge, obviously highly relevant to today, uh, but also I, I find this to appear to be much more like what the, the types of tasks, at least for me, that I have found businesses to need uh, when people come to me for like contracting and consulting. The data tends to look more like this than your average uh, Kaggle competition. Now, nothing against Kaggle competitions. There's definitely true competition there. Uh, but generally, Kaggle comes down to um, a competition of optimization rather than a competition of finding insights in highly, highly unstructured data. Now, sometimes that's wrong, but for the most part, that's kind of what you find on Kaggle. Because Kaggle has to be objective in, in, in enforcing that objective objectivity there's people that will optimize for those objective results. So anyways, enough on that. This is a very interesting data set. I've downloaded it and kind of peeked at it. Uh, and that's kind of why I decided, no, this would be really good to do a video on. I've just barely peeked at the data and then we're gonna dive in via code. And you will see kind of firsthand uh, the, the process that I at least begin with uh, looking through a data set. Th this kind of data set though, I mean, you will spend, you know, 20 to hundreds of hours, you know, uh, going through here trying to get insights. So probably here at best we'll see like the first hour. So don't expect anything too crazy, but this is just kind of my process at least. So uh, to get the data, just go ahead and make an account. You can download the data. Um, also, they have various tasks here. We'll talk about this um, in a little bit, but as you've likely found, like the problem here is there's so much information. Like if we look at data, it says there's 29,000 articles and then 13,000 are full text. Um, and these are scholarly articles, just to make that clear, uh, which is important. Um, and there's so much information and so much new information that's just being pushed out very fast. There's historical information and then new information, and it's very difficult. So as you've probably found yourself, like trying to learn about this is the variability in the information and facts that you might hear uh, is really high um, and then not only that at the variability but there's also just there's so many like little details that um, are just really difficult um, and, and, and so in this case with the um, you know the, just the critical and acute nature of what we're going through here um, it's making it very hard normally it really would be like grad students that would sit and go through all this stuff but we we just do not have time for that you know um, and then businesses for example like they it, it's either you or they're gonna hire some interns or something to do to try to answer these questions but it turns out programming can often uh, do a better job at it so anyway uh, let's dig in uh, we'll talk about these tasks in a moment but first start the download of data and then we're going to start going through um, the actual data once it's downloaded. You can either pause or just as your download is going, let's look at my um, my file. So you'll get a, a, a you know a zip, you'll unzip it, and then you'll get this basically. So the last update was March 13th. Uh, it is March 19th at the time of my recording this, but uh, so hopefully at some point maybe they'll make an update, but we'll see. Um, so coming into here, this is what we get. We get these four directories. Um, initially I kind of expected this to be the full thing, right? And then this was like the commercial subset, non-commercial subset, and then some sort of custom license subset. Uh, but then I click on here, I see 803 items. Um, and then I click on this one and I see 9,000 items. Uh, this one has almost 2,000 items uh, and the custom license has 1,400. So that tells me right away, no, we, we, we're gonna have to go through all of these directories. And then inside the directory, uh, we have another directory, first of all, just keep this in mind, with the exact same name as the parent directory, so who knows why that's going on. Um, but then we have these JSON files. So now, let's just look at a JSON file so we know what we're looking at. So already the JSON, I'm like, whoa, that's not what I expected. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be in JSON. I mean, maybe it's coming from sort of J some sort of JSON-based uh, uh, database, I don't know. Anyway. Uh, so what we have here is we, we're clearly just your, your typical, you know, keys and values. Um, scrolling down, okay, we've, the first like body of text that we found at all is called abstract, so we can grab the abstract, okay, noted. Uh, then we truly have body text, and then we can already see quite quickly, uh, it's in chunks of text. So you've got body text, and then text, 
and then maybe some information. In this case, there's really no information in there. Site spans, reference spans, and se section, I guess. I don't know. Um, so yeah, clearly we get chunks of text. And then here, we, we definitely do have some site span stuff. I'm not really sure what this is. If this is that, like, you know, character placement. I have no idea. <laughs> no clue. But clearly, we're looking for the, the chunks of text inside of body text. Okay. Okay, so I think we have a general idea now. That's about as much as I want to pour over the, the actual JSON files. I think we're ready to uh, begin coding. So if you haven't fully downloaded the data yet, now would be a good time to pause. <laughs> um, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, make a file. So nano corona.py. And we'll just say start. And um, where is it? Here we go. Open with Sublime. I need to set Sublime as my default editor. So uh, right away, let's just start. It will take time to go through like each of these directories. So let's just start with this top directory. So I'm just going to grab the name for now. Later, we'll go through all four probably so we can get all of the data possible. But we're going to say uh, ders equals, and we'll just make this a list. Whoops. Uh, let's see. And then immediately, what we want to do is for, I don't know, D and DERS, um, we want to, uh, let's we'll go ahead and import OS, import OS, and we, let's just make sure we get all the files. So the first thing we want to do is like, you know, iterate through all the files. So for D and DERS, and then um, basically, uh, we want to do for file in os.listdir. And I'm gonna use F strings here purely because, um, you know, some people have said that it won't, like a forward slash wouldn't work on Windows. Uh, but from my history of working on Windows for many years, I have found that even F strings on Windows uh, did work with a forward slash. So someone please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Like if you're on Windows and that's not working and you're on like Python, you know, 3.7 or whatever, um, yeah, I guess let me know, but it should work. <laughs> I hope. I hope that's not, I'm getting a Ubuntu is having a problem. Uh, uh, hopefully we're still recording. Looks good. <laughs> we'll find out. Cool. Uh, <laughs> so we know that it was the directory slash directory. So then we just want to go through the files. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, let's just go ahead and print um, file. And let's just see. I also don't have everything correctly set up yet on this machine. This is a relatively new machine for me. So... Um, I'm going to run everything from the terminal. Let me just make sure Python. Yeah, so Python for me points to 3.7. Uh, Python, run the file. Cool. Look at all of those. Okay, so we are pointing. We're able to find our JSON files. Very good. Uh, the next order of business is to open one. Um, so let's go ahead and import JSON. And what we want to do is uh, file path will be... Um, I guess it would just be this right here. So we'll just copy, paste, slash, um, file. Cool. Uh, so then we'll go say J equals JSON dot load. And we want to load open a uh, file path with the intention to RB. Cool. Now let's print J and let us issue a break so we don't get too crazy but we just want to make sure things are working as expected up to this point and it uh, they are so uh, so we've got our JSON now let's do a quick uh, for key in J uh, print key let's just get a general idea of the keys in this, this uh, document so we got paper ID metadata abstract body text and so on so let us now uh, let's go ahead and print a couple of things. Let's print uh, J metadata. We already kind of have, I think I know what body text is already going to look like. That kind of looked pretty clear to me. Um, metadata appears to be quite a bit of things. So you'll get the title. This apparently has no title. <laughs> Authors. Um, oh gosh, I, don't, I almost want to, okay. Uh, let's do 4K in j metadata it almost would be nicer in a uh, notebook format didn't really plan for that uh, okay so really just title authors really title that looks that's a lot of stuff for there to just be title and authors but 
Okay, sure. Okay, so what we're gonna say is title equals J uh, metadata um, title. Uh, and then we also had abstract was equal to J abstract. Uh, and then the next thing that we really wanna do is um, let's go uh, before let's print abstract real quick print abstract I need to leave this up I'm gonna close these two because that's gonna be annoying to keep going doing that every time oh interesting so app abstract appears to be in a list format which is odd I'm not really sure what to think about abstract being in a list, but would there ever be two abstract? I mean, I'm not a professional at uh, papers, but uh, <laughs> um, having written all of zero papers in my life, uh, <laughs> but even in college, I'm pretty sure there was only one abstract, but okay. So interestingly, abstract zero. So the abstract needs to be abstract zero, I guess. Um, let's stop breaking and stop printing and let's run through everything to just see, no. Okay, so sometimes we don't have um, an abstract. So let's try abstract except, and let's, we're just trying, I'm trying to see, is there ever a time print where it's not a list? Cause that does feel weird, but surely, like I'm, my expectation is this came from a JSON based database so my expectation is that everything will have the same format, but I, I could be totally wrong. Uh, J abstract. So my thought here is that this will be an empty list when we hit that exception. Um, that's the only thing we're gonna print. So hopefully we'll see a bunch of empty lists. Yeah, cool. Okay. So except, so in the case that there isn't an abstraction, we're just gonna say, or an abstract, we're gonna say abstract is empty, just empty string, okay? So, all right, so we've got the abstract, the title, and now we need to grab our body text. Um, so we're going to say uh, full text equals an empty string for now, and then for text in, uh, what, what is it, where, J, uh, body text, body text for text and J body text, okay. Uh, print text. Uh, let's continue our break because now we're going to just just try to see like are we getting what we expected here? Print te for text. So we need to say text text I guess so we call text <laughs> for text and J by text text texty. <laughs> okay, try up oh, shit. What happened there? I said shoot, by the way. Um, okay, yeah, that looks more like what we expect. So, um, uh, text, body text. So now what we wanna do is we're gonna append this uh, to full text. So I'm just gonna say full text plus equals uh, text text <laughs> uh, plus new line, new line. Beautiful. At the very end, let's print um, full text and let's stop printing there. And let me see now what we're looking at. Okay, yeah. Okay, so now we finally, after what has it been, 13 minutes, 14 minutes, we've got the data in the format that we expected to get the data. <laughs> but again, this is more likely to be the case of how even text data, if you're gonna get it from like, for example, I've had um, like even retailers and then certain news um, companies and I'm trying to think of what else I've seen something similar to this, but uh, it is data typically in a format that you did not expect. It's either CSV and, or JSON and not just like text documents <laughs> like you might think. Um, or even crazier, I've seen quite a few things. I've seen some stuff, y'all. Uh, okay, so okay, so we've got things organized to an extent. And then I guess the next thing I would do is organize it into, um, I guess it depends on what our, our goal is. So, 
So we've gone this far, and now our job is to extract something meaningful from the data. So we've kind of you know, structured it to some extent, um, or at least we're, we're close to being able to structure it. So now coming back here and going to tasks, you know, I'm looking through this list and I, I thought about it a little bit initially, but um, the, I think, you know, the, the problem with, with extracting meaning from text is you, you want to start with the lowest hanging fruit first. And, and in, in, in this case, when we're trying to extract from text, this is so heavily an NLP or natural language processing type of task that in order for us to mine this data, we need to we need to know what we're looking for, right? If you don't know what you're looking for, you can't find it. <laughs> so the first thing is, how do we find any of these things? So for example, many of these terms, you know, you might think, well, you could just search for pharmaceutical, non-pharmaceutical intervention. But Many times the idea or some, you know, somebody talking about a non-pharmaceutical intervention, they're going to say it in such a way that is not non-pharmaceutical intervention. They're going to call it something else, right? Um, and, and they're going to describe it in such a way. Now, one thing is like, like um, vaccine, the term vaccine will probably always be called vaccine, okay? Um, another one would be like antiviral. Right, so antiviral is probably always going to be called an antiviral, okay? Um, similarly, looking up here like transmission, incubation, and environmental stability, um, some of these are, you know, like me personally, I'm, I'm more curious about things like, you know, how is it really transmitted? Are we talking, are we talking three feet, six feet? How long does it live on surfaces? But then even like you look at surfaces, let's say environmental stability, you got questions of like hard surfaces, porous surfaces like clothing and so on, um, in, in liquid form or in liquids rather. Um, lots, it gets very complicated really quick. So what we're trying to figure out is something that does not hopefully get too complicated too fast, figure that out. Uh, and then we can start trying to tackle some of these more challenging things. So. Uh, one of the other terms that I think is highly unlikely to be changing uh, in, in uh, at least scholarly journals about this is incubation. The term incubation, um, I feel like my tag in this shirt keeps flipping up and it's driving me nuts. Um, the term incubation uh, is likely to always be called incubation in a scholarly uh, journal or text or whatever in research. So my intuition or expectation is that we can use incubation as a starting point because we can search this document for incubation and hopefully very close to where the word incubation is used, we can search for a duration, right? So numbers. So my expectation again is that we could probably do a really basic regular expression um, and then later we could really ramp up that regular expression to find um, many more examples and then hopefully filter out any mistakes. But chances are numbers around the term incubation, my guess is that these numbers are going to be incubation times in the form of hours or probably most likely days. So again, with a lot of these things, we're looking at so many variables like in, in incubation with depending on what we're looking at, we're looking at something that could be like minutes, hours, you know, days, weeks, months, like who knows, right? So, so, you know, incubation is a general term, but in this case, I think we could probably search for digits and days. Um, and, and that's my expectation. So that's what I'm going to approach with this data set first. So let's begin. Okay, so we're gonna look for incubation. Um, the way that we can look, well, there's a couple of different things that we could do. One option we, we really do have is from this point and from full text right here in line, you know, um, I swear I hit my tab. I must have hit caps lock. I don't know. Anyway, uh, we could begin searching right now, um, even here for text. Like we could just search in this loop, um, but not all tasks will be that easy for us, I don't think. So instead, what I'd like to do is um, build a data frame. So first, let's just do uh, docs. I'm gonna make that a list. I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna import, import pandas as PD. I think it was suggested and I just ignored it. Uh, and we're gonna say here docs.append and then we're going to append a list and that will be type title 
title. Um, abstract, I guess. It doesn't really matter the order, I suppose. And then full text. Okay. I'm going to comment that out. Uh, also, just so we know where we are, I'm going to, from TQD, TQDM, import uh, TQDM. And this is just a nice way to make a progress bar. If you want, if you don't have this, just pip install TQDM. Same thing with pandas, pip install pandas. Um, mm -mm, for file in. So one thing I want to do is let's go ahead and print D. And then here, we're going to say TQDM around this os.list.dir. Because eventually we'll have multiple directories. Um, cool. So now we'll stop the break. And let's just run that first, see where we stand. And... Um, yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, that's quite fast. <laughs> that went quick. That was quicker than I thought. Okay, so now what we can do is we've import PD, import pandas as PD. So now what we're going to say is df equals PD dot data frame, data frame, can't, uh, title cased. And um, we really can just convert docs. Uh, and then we're going to give it the columns. And this is just a list of column names. So we're going to say literally title uh, abstract and then full text. Cool. So now we have our data frame and just to make sure that things are working as expected, let's go ahead and output the head just to see and things look good. Okay, good. So now <clears throat> what we can actually use uh, is the filtration methodology that um, Pandas gives us. So one option we have is like we can make incubation and we can say that is equal to df where uh, df uh, full text, full text um, dot contains, I think this will work, <laughs> uh, incubation. Uh, we will find out if that works. Uh, print incubation dot head, incubation dot head. So incubation equals df where the df full text contains the string incubation. Let's run. Ooh, series object has no attribute contains. Has no attribute. Series object. Series object. So maybe we have to convert it to a string. So let's say dot stir. Whoa. <laughs> Did it. Okay. This is going well. Uh, okay, so now we have a data frame that only con consists of body text, uh, well, actually, whole articles that have somewhere in them something about incubation. We also could have filtered by, like, title or something, but that went so fast, I, don't, I just don't think it's necessary. Okay, so now that we've done that, I would say we can pull out just the text at this point. Um, later, if you wanted to be able to cite sources or something, you know, we have the information necessary. And just for the record, I mean, at least that went very quick. Now that was 800 out of what, 13,004 articles. So things will take 13 times longer uh, at some point. But, um, you know, some, it just depends on the size of data. So in our case, we're dealing with two gigabytes total of data. So we can, we can go pretty fast and loose with our R and D here. Whereas historically, one thing that I have learned is if you are definitely working with a very large data set, you're kind of, this is what I would describe as kind of a pre-processing data, you know, pre-processing step. Um, it is wise to save everything. <laughs> so uh, in this case, we're just not saving very much. We're not, we're not going too hard here um, because we can iterate very quickly. But normally my best suggestion ever is if like you're dealing with like a terabyte of information, uh, in your pre-processing step, save as much as you can. Um, Cause like in the data frame, for example, we can at any point we can output this data frame. So that, so like the time it takes to do like any sort of logic and stuff, you only need to necessarily do that one time um, if it's a big data set. In this case, it's really not that big. So we can kind of goof off <laughs> to, some, to some extent. Okay, so now what we're gonna say is, um, we'll say texts, texties text equals incubation uh, body text dot values. And now we can begin to iterate over texts. So for T in texts, uh, let's print T Burke and come over here. Um, 
yeah, I guess we can, we'll just, let's just, by the time I figure out how exactly I want to run it, it will be too late anyways. Body text, oh, what was the issue? Full text, not body text. Beautiful noises that cup makes. I hope it captured that beautiful ASMR for you guys. Uh, full text. Text, text. Let's try that again and see if that works. Good. Okay, so <clears throat> how are we going to do what we think we want to do? So I, um, I think probably a, a valid method here is going to be to just simply split by space. I'm not space. <laughs> Um, period. <laughs> so I think we can get away with splitting everything by a period here and then look in that exact sentence for incubation. And if we find incubation in that sentence, look for a duration, which is digits. So, um, and there will be many problems with that. Hopefully I'll remember to address them, but obviously some of these things are going to probably do things like compare incubation times or it might be, um, it might not even be a comparison. Like maybe, maybe in one sentence, it's it says here's the uh, here's one incubation time, and then it's like compare, and then in the next sentence, it's like well compared to blah blah blah, and it's a whole, it's a t completely different even sentence. So there are many kind of gotchas that you might find in this case that you're going to have to eventually probably figure out some way of detecting when that's the case. So in, in, what I would do is I would search for related diseases that you expect could be compared to and then see what is that being talked about about anywhere ne around where we're about to pull an incubation time and if it is forget about it but for now we're going to keep things very simple we're going to iterate over text and then what we're going to say is um for sentence in uh t dot split by uh period space so we don't split by like decimals <laughs> right um let us print uh, let's print print sentence, but in fact, bro, let's say if if in, if incubation in sentence print the sentence. Um, and actually, rather than breaking, let's print a few and just kind of see what we're dealing with. So let us run it. <clears throat> dot split copy I'm a little confused how we're seeing how are we seeing uh, that looks like a lot more text than I would expect to be seeing per split for sentence for T and text T was the full text right yeah uh, for sentence in t dot split by huh my dog's barking hmm hmm why are we seeing that that is odd I, I would not expect to I might have to pause for my dogs They're going crazy Well, this is bad timing, because I, what I don't understand is... Okay, I'll have to go figure out what my dogs are going on about. <laughs> I'll be back. Okay, to be honest, I have no idea. I think we've maybe got a package. I'm not really sure, but I uh, don't know. Anyway, continuing along. Uh, yeah, we're stuck at this, like, full text, uh, converting them to values, dot values. I believe that's what I want. Full text, dot values. Um, I'm just a little confused. <laughs> If incubation in sentence, print the sentence, t dot split, t in text, um, I am slightly confused. So let's print uh, len text. I just, I'm expecting to not see, um, you know, we've got many examples, like this should have been split. Why was that not split? I don't know. Um, I'm obviously missing something unbelievably obvious here. Uh, text for t in text, print t, that's our Oh my gosh, was I always printing T? Are you kidding me? <laughs> this is embarrassing. <laughs> is that really it? Is that? I can't even remember now if that was there. Oh, that's terrible. If that's really it, I'm going to be... Oh dear. Oh. 
I guess I'll leave that in, but that's, that's unfortunate. Uh, that's unfortunate. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> so. <laughs> Dude, that's just embarrassing. Anyway, um, okay, so we have incubation time, blah, blah, blah. We assumed the incubation time could not exceed 30 days. Okay, very interesting. Um, 48 hours. So, like, we're going to find stuff like that. I don't know. That's not very good. The average incubation period was seven days. Okay, so, like, that's an example of something we're looking for. Estimated incubation, 5.2 days. Okay, so that's another example that we would look for. The, this article selects the in incubation period as seven days okay so you get the idea i think we can look for um really just to start i would look for examples of uh digit some digit space days right we can do that very simply so uh and then if we find i would also say we will only accept um examples where we find incubation and then one digit space days example, and then the sentence has to be done. So for example, and the reason why I want to do that is like here. So we say, okay, the incubation period is seven days, blah, blah, blah. They keep talking, yik yakking, latent persons seven days ago. Now this could be, this could be anything, right? It doesn't necessarily, like this could be some other number of days. I think this is still in reference to why it's seven days, but, um, I, you might have scenarios where you have these like two variations. So if there's more than, if we've, you know, if our logic is, hey, this is how we're going to find incubation times, and then we find two digits. Now, in some cases, it could be a digit, you know, incubation time of seven to 10 days or seven dash 10 days. We might find scenarios like that, uh, but we might also find scenarios like this where it's not, they aren't related to each other. So if we find that scenario and we find more than two instances, um, then our logic is not solid and we're just going to toss it. So, <clears throat> so let's just start with something super basic because that's what we need. <laughs> Cause I can't even figure out how to split text <laughs> and not lose it. Uh, okay. If incubation in sentence, print sentence, cool. Uh, we're going to use a regular expression. So we're going to say import, import R E and don't worry. I'm no regular expression expert as I'm sure you will soon see. Um, Let's say single day, uh, and we're going to say that is equal to a read.find all and its pattern and then the thing. So we are going to look for some sort of regular expression in the sentence. So, um, so the first single day expression that we are going to hunt for is going to be some digit that is really one to two. So like one, you know, either single digits or double digits followed by a space followed by at least D A Y because sometimes it'll be hours and stuff such. So we, we definitely need to um, be looking very specifically for day. So single day, read, I find all blah, blah, blah. Okay. So if, uh, if Len uh, single day equals one, then we're assuming this is a good find. So let's go ahead and row. Uh, let's go ahead and print a single day zero and let's print the sentence. Uh, and then we'll tab over these just for nice, beautiful formatting. Uh, and then, no, that's fine. We will see a few examples. Um, let's see how we're doing. What is going on? Oh, okay, so it's uh, two day, seven day. How come, oh, we're printing this sentence here. Why do I keep getting bitten by uh, forgetting old prints? I really don't appreciate it. <laughs> ah, beautiful, 89 day, no. May suggest, where's the 89 even coming from? Oh my gosh. Mm. Should we say, but okay, here's a question. Why did it find 0.89? Oh, because then it was followed by <laughs> check. Okay, so what we're gonna say, Spash. Take that. Let's try that one more time. Where you at? 89 days? Gotcha. 
All right, let's see what this 21 is. 21, susceptible compartment return. Quarantine all going to return to the susceptible. Okay. Uh, oh, the max. So they do think 21s is the max maximum incubation. We've got 14 day, uh, at least 14 days. And we stress that 17 to 14 days here. So possible. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, cool. So, okay, that's a good find. As you can see, we, we did see various things like two, two, 14 days. Also, how come you didn't find the two and then throw this away? I don't really know. 14 day. Oh, because it was 14 day. Copy that. Okay. <clears throat> like I said, regular expression expert. Uh, so, so as you can see already, like we would probably want to search this and this, and then also search for two, two 14 days, two dash 14, so many things that we'd want to search for. We'll keep it nice and simple for now, however. So if we find a single day, what do we want to do from there? The other thing I bet we're missing is like, you know, these these are keeping it to whole numbers, like seven. But chances are a lot of articles have decimals as well. Um, <laughs> I don't think I should try my hand at a possible decimal. Let's let's try it. Hey, hey, let's do it. Let's show the people how terrible of a programmer I can be at times. So let's say we wanted to have a possible decimal, that means you would have a slash day, a digit rather, you know, one to two, one to two, followed by a period. And this whole thing, we would have zero or one occurrence of, and then another digit, right? <laughs> Let's see what happens. Let's see. Five dot, okay, so that's a problem. Five, ooh, why didn't it find five dot two? Bro. Isn't that, can't I encase that? I thought I could get, I thought I could encase it with um, parentheses. Is it brackets maybe? I wish I could remember. <laughs> uh, Cause we really want all that together. Otherwise we would get up to four digits and we don't want four digits. We want that. Is it, maybe the parentheses is what I screwed up. Maybe. Is it a bracket? Yeah, you're already, congratulations. You're already seeing how terrible I can be at times. No, I don't think a bracket is what we want. Someone comment below, remind me. <laughs> the basics of regular expressions. Cause I want this whole thing possibly. But for now, let's keep it simple. Like I said, yeah, you got to see how terrible I can be. <laughs> Cause we want those two things possibly. And I just don't know. There's gotta be some way to, I thought it was with parentheses, but I think I'm wrong. Anyway, as we saw, because you'll get like that leading number, but not the following number. And I think that's because the parentheses like picks that part to find. Like I think the parentheses means you're going to find, you'll find what's in the parentheses. And this stuff still has to be found, but you'll only find, like it's only going to return what's in the parentheses when instead, yeah, I want that group. I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I'm not good enough. My apologies. Someone comment one below uh, and we'll get it. Somebody will do it. Um, okay, so we have single day. Great. Uh, so now what we want to do is let's say incubation times. We'll make that a list. Uh, and then we will append. Let's see how far we are in time here. Another 10 minutes. I think I stopped at 25 because of my lovely animals. Um, incubation times. So what we're going to do is if we do find it, I think I was pretty happy with what, you know, this regular expression did for us. So, um, I just want to make sure I didn't screw up when I removed our other uh, example. No, it looks good. Um, we will just add them to this list. So what we'll say is incubation times dot append. And we'll, these are ints, but later we might find floats, uh, given somebody who knows how to write regular expressions better than moi, uh, we'll say float uh, single day zero. So again, these should all be actual integers at this stage, but I think eventually you'd want to have the possibility for a float. Um, the other thing we could do is, like if I was doing this for a client, you know, and I really wanted to know the answer to that question, um, and I could not figure out how to write a freaking regular expression, I would legit just single day int, single day float. <laughs> That's the kind of programmer I am. But for now, we'll just do it this way. Um, and uh, incubation time, blah, blah, blah. Cool. Uh, we don't need to print out anymore. That's kind of pointless. 
Very good, very good. And at the very end, let's print uh, let's print both incubation times, and I'm just curious, what is the len of our len of our incubation times? Beautiful. Save, rerun this. Where, where did we forget a... Uh... Really? Show me again. Line 62. Oh, okay, we never closed off that parenthesis. I see. Again, could not, oh, of course, of course. Um, append float, uh, let's split by space. Mm -mm. We'll just say um, num equals a single day zero so we, we, we're basically trying to just grab the number from and i actually think you could split by day i think you can convert spaces in a number to just a number i think you get away with that but we could split by uh space let's just do num single day dot split by space uh print num break So in every instance, it is the first fifth element, as I was hoping, but I just wanted to make sure. Uh, so num one, fantastic. Just clean this up a little bit. Okay, so already we have 71 examples of incubation times, and it looks like our largest is like 42 maybe. Uh, yeah, looks like that's the biggest one. So then what we could do is uh, slowly begin to possibly wrap this one up. Import, um, let's see, import matplot, matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Uh, and then let's go ahead and have style uh, from matplotlib. We're going to import some style. We're going to use some style. And we will come down and we will say plt.hist. And remind me. Time, uh, yeah, the, so, okay, so the, the array and then the bins. So it will be incubation times. And then we'll do bins 10. Um, plt dot show um, the y axis plt dot y was it label yeah beautiful um, we're gonna say counts I guess bin counts uh, plt dot x label will be incubation time days beautiful beautiful. We are coming down the home stretch. There we go. We got a nice histogram of projected incubation time. Again, we probably caught some things that we should not have caught here. So we still have a lot of work to do. Uh, but I think I'll show one more thing. And that is, well, a couple things. One, do we have, no, let's just quickly uh, import NumPy as NP. And can we get away with... Uh, print uh, the mean projected incubation time is blah blah blah. Uh, what is it? NP dot mean uh, incubation times. Incubation times. Let's run that. Okay, about 10 days. We'll add days to that as well. So, yeah, that is the projected kind of average. Okay, so possibly extracted some meaning there. Um, days. Okay, finally, we only went through that one set of files. So let us add the others. <laughs> and hopefully they're all organized the same way. <laughs> but we're going to find out. Uh, com use subset. <clears throat> Let's grab the non commercial use subset. And finally, we will grab the custom license. Copy. Pasta, save, 
let's try again hopefully that doesn't take forever it looks like it very well might take forever <laughs> how come those first 800 go so fast and then this one go so slow well the good news is i'm already editing this so maybe i'll just kind of speed it up uh and make a cut because i already have to edit this because of my lovely animals oh, aren't they sweet they're so sweet Um, while we wait on that, let me think if there's anything else I really need to talk about. I'll edit this whole thing out if, uh, if there isn't. Um, the other, yeah, I guess one thing I would do is maybe come check out some of these kernels, to be honest. Um, like, I don't know what a lot of these things are, so understanding paper with text analytics. Like, there's probably a lot of really great ideas. Here's even a rule set. Incubation period. Let's see what they've done. It looks like they've gone a little harder on <laughs> on uh, making their matches. Let's see what they found. What did you find? Interval matcher. Yeah, so they, it looks like he built like something really specific. Term matcher, interval matcher, period matcher. Interesting. Interesting. What did you find? It looks like this is it. Incubation period. Um, oh, well, here's ours. How much data was that? Let's go look real quick. So we got 562. Uh, with the mean uh, projected incubation time of 9.11. And what was this? 10 bins? I think it was 10 bins. One thing we definitely should have done is saved this array because it takes so long to create that array, or list rather. Whoops. Because <laughs> how many bins did you go with, bro? What did he do? PLT to, oh, he just made a bar graph. He has lots of bins. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay. <clears throat> so. Um, yeah, so we can see, you know, on average, somewhere between zero and 10 days is like the most. Uh, but then if you were to like stack up all these bars here, it, you know, get to like 18 or whatever this number would be, uh, it would be pretty high. So somewhere up to like 20 days looks to be not a shocking number. Now, of course, I would, the next, one of the next things I would do is try to figure out what's going on here. Um, <laughs> why is there something there? Uh, also, let's, uh... Even though we didn't save it as an object, we can cheat. Um, like, I wonder if we give it more bins. I do want to kind of see a few more bins. So, what am I going to do? Come on down here. And I'm going to say incubation times equals pasta. I'm proud of myself for just copying that. Uh, let's change this to 30 bins. Save. Uh... One more attempt. Okay, so we make more bins. Okay, so we can clearly see like these, I might even, so like if as I look further and, and try to fix this program, um, I would look for each of these and see uh, what what did we get that gave us these? Because I don't think those are real incubation times. So we'd want to, you know, figure out where those came from to determine, you know, how can we better improve um, our script. But yeah, it looks like, Somewhere between five and five and I don't know what is that seven five and six days uh, probably five and seven what does what does the mouse say seven um, looks like the incubation time is probably five to seven days on expected average but then you know like I said like even before if we took this one stacked this on top of here stacked this over top of here it clearly you know more than ten maybe even up to two weeks uh, yeah so anyway okay so some starting information I'm sure we made lots of um, you know incorrect polls we are missing a lot of data because i'm sure many days we're using decimals and i just i'm just not smart enough to, to do regular expressions apparently um i honestly just have not done regular expressions and it might even be years now like i just haven't had to deal with them i usually get daniel to write them <laughs> so anyway um yeah so some interesting initial insights we could keep going with this and keep trying to find more examples and stuff i'm sure there's much more incubation um stuff in there that we could pull from uh but then using kind of a similar methodology we could start to uh be curious about some of the other tasks that are on here um maybe you've got an idea of something you want to look for or maybe you want to do something totally separate from what i've done here but on the data set anyway it's a cool data set and it's obviously an important data set uh, and I think it's a realistic data set. I mean, it's as real as it gets. This is a real problem that we're actually experiencing right now. Um, 
and I mean just just the data set in general this is a, a data mining problem um, so anyway uh, I think that's all if you've got questions comments suggestions concerns whatever feel free to leave them below if you've got something cool uh, you can feel free to link it below I'll check it out um, also usually on on uh, Kaggle like I said like I would look through some of the kernels maybe participate in some of the discussions and stuff and um, probably learn some really interesting things so yeah, that's all for now. I uh, hope you guys are staying safe, and I will see you guys in another video.